Gerald Andriol, Professor and Chief of Urology at the Seitman Cancer Center at Washington University School of Medicine and Barnes Jewish Hospital in St. Louis. And today I'm going to talk to you about MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy of the prostate. Uh, this is a new technique that has enhanced our ability to diagnose prostate cancer and to care for patients who already have prostate cancer. So let me just show you uh, the way we do uh, an ultrasound fusion biopsy of the prostate. You know, the patient will have had an MRI scan, and if he has an abnormal lesion or an abnormal spot within its prostate, let's say it's, it's up here, he comes to uh, our uh, facility and we per perform an a transrectal ultrasound of the prostate. And we do that by inserting the probe into the rectum. Then our Euronab device has software that will fuse or, or or superimpose the ultrasound image with the MRI image. And this will enable us to take a biopsy needle that goes through the probe that's in the rectum, introduce it into the prostate, and sample the most suspicious area within the prostate, as that is most likely the area that harbors cancer. And this is a really significant improvement over the conventional approach to diagnosing prostate cancer, which relied on the ultrasound alone. In the conventional approach, the doctor puts a similar probe into the rectum, but he's generally only able to take biopsy samples of the part of the prostate that's closest to the rectum. So you can easily see how that type of an approach would miss a cancer if it was located deeper within the prostate. And moreover, it can also miss a cancer if by chance those needles just happen to go on either side of the cancer. Now, who should have this type of uh, ultrasound fusion biopsy of the prostate? I think there's three categories of patients. The first is the man who has an elevated PSA. Now, we all know that PSA is a very good marker, but some men with an elevated PSA do not have prostate cancer at all. And uh, for these men, we, we believe that getting an MRI with a follow-up biopsy, if the MRI shows a, significant, a, a suspicious area within the prostate, is the best way to characterize whether he has cancer or not. The second group of men who should have uh, this type of biopsy are men who have had an elevated PSA, but they've already had a conventional biopsy that did not show cancer. We know that about half of those patients, even though they went through the conventional biopsy and were told they didn't have cancer, actually harbor a cancer because the needles just happened to miss one that was located in the biopsy area or it was somewhere deeper in the prostate that was just not hit. And the final group of men who really benefit from this are men who already have a diagnosis of prostate cancer that is small and non-aggressive. These patients have, are usually pl placed on what we call active surveillance. We want to watch them very carefully to see whether this small, seemingly non-aggressive cancer is growing or not. And using the MRI, and using MRI-targeted uh, fusion biopsies is much more accurate in determining whether that man's cancer is growing or not. Now finally, before closing, I'd like to talk about one other application for this technology that we've been using. And that is, we can use the same software platform to, to uh, destroy the part of the prostate that contains the cancer. And we do that by, instead of inserting a biopsy needle that just samples the abnormal area, we can introduce a laser fiber, a radiofrequency fiber, a microwave fiber, or a cryoprobe. And using those energy sources, we know that we can destroy small cancers that are within the prostate, and that's very beneficial to patients because that approach has virtually no side effects.